from talking to Kate from People and Places. Kate, People and Places claim to put the right people in the right places. How do you do that? Over time. It takes a long time to make sure that the place is right for the person and the person is right for the place. That's part of what we pride ourselves on, which is our matching process, whereby we find out as much as we can about the volunteer, we know as much as we can about the project, and we can tie those two ends together. And how do you do that? Talk me through the process. Okay, so we begin by knowing what the project needs what the community needs or whatever the project is we need to know what their needs are those needs are help uh, are, are identified by our local partners so they work with the project first of all to discover what the project feels it needs once we have those needs it's almost like a shopping list i can then start working with volunteers so when i get an application from a volunteer i will ask for their skills, their professional skills, their life skills, their um, hobbies, their likes, their dislikes. All of that gives me a picture of a volunteer which I can then begin to fit into this need of the local community. That's where it starts. That can take quite a long time, obviously. It could take two or three months of communication before we're all comfortable that we have the right person in the right place. You've talked a lot about collecting information from volunteers. What sort of information do you provide to the volunteers? We hope we provide as much information to the volunteers as the volunteers provide to us. They need to know what's going to happen from their point of view as well. So, we will provide um, codes of conduct, um, language sheets, uh, a draft outline of what their project and their work is going to look like. We have a shed load of information not only from the project and through our local partners but also from previous volunteers who have worked there, who understand what's going on and can share that information with future volunteers. It's what we refer to as, and I will endeavour to do this in English, pass the baton I'm sorry, I lived in the United States for a very long time and to me it's always passed the baton. But anyway, it's an important aspect of what this is about, so that every volunteer is part of something much greater than themselves. They're adding to the work of previous volunteers, they're feeding into the work of future volunteers. It's a constant, it's ongoing and it changes all the time. How do the future volunteers communicate with the past volunteers? How is this information shared? To begin with, every volunteer who returns from a project, we will ask for their report. And we want everything, warts and all. We want to know what worked, what didn't work. We want to know what we could do better, what they could do better, what the future volunteers could do better. What really works and how future volunteers can do that is dependent on the information we get from our project and from previous volunteers. Those aspects together, then, I will um, share those reports of previous volunteers with future volunteers, obviously with everyone's permission. We don't share anything without their permission. Once I, share, I start sharing reports, I can also put them in touch with each other. I do that only by email. It's not my place to say where... Some give someone a street address. I don't want to um, give that kind of personal information. It's not right. But in email contact, it's entirely up to them. They can arrange to meet. They can arrange to have long phone calls and frequently do. So they, they talk with each other about all kinds of minutiae which are, are real experiences, not necessarily what we even anticipated or expect. So... How do you ensure that the match is right for the project, for the community? When I have as much information as I ask for from a volunteer, uh, from an applicant, 
the first thing I do with that information is to share that with our local partners. It's their role to liaise with the project all the time. So they will know if that particular volunteer is going to be able to add right now. So it's not just the right people in the right places, the time needs to be right for those skills to be part of what I still think of as a fabric. And all these aspects that I'm talking about are threads that make up a whole fabric.